Awesome, Clark. Um, sir, thank you for coming on. Uh, Thanks for having me. It's a honestly a great, great uh, mm -hmm. privilege to have you on here and to share your expertise, share your knowledge. Um, we usually don't look at people and think, oh, hey, this guy's probably lived a life, mm -hmm. you know, because we're not, I don't know, we tend to move away from spending too much time with people we don't know, mm -hmm. you know, and social media and phones right. and all that type of stuff. Right. But introduce yourself. Uh, well, Clark Andrus, I yeah. have lived in Sacramento now 22 years mm -hmm. since my wife brought me here. And I am originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Oh. So I'm from a college town, grew up with the whole intellectual thing around me all my life. Okay. And then I decided to go to school in Indiana, mm. Indiana University. And I did go to school kind of a bit, I was belligerent about going to college. My dad and my mom were, were telling me all the time, I have to go to school. Mm-hmm. I have got to get my, at least a BA. Yeah. And, and then after that, you can decide what you want to do. So I went from being an, a later elementary education major mm -hmm. to a journalism major. Mm -hmm. And then I figured out journalism wasn't going to go anywhere. And that even in the eighties, I knew that it was yeah. going to become all like the way it is today. Yeah. And, uh, and then I just finally decided on sociology. So I got my BA in that in 1988. And then I used my degree. So how many years, did, I'm going to interrupt. How many years did yeah. it take until you realized what you wanted to be? Well, How you mean the sociology degree? Yeah, yeah. Because it's really not, you know, I don't consider myself a sociologist, but okay. I got a degree in it. Okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, but I would say two years of flittering around and driving my dad crazy, <laughs> yeah. trying to figure it out. He's like, it's costing me money, you know, because it's out of state school. Yeah. Bloomington, Indiana. Okay. And so, yeah, I'd say two years, and then it took me two, two to three years. Then I took a year off. Okay. To go to the national parks and work and just chill. Yeah. And then I came back and finished. Okay. So the whole thing took six years. Oh, man. But it took me two years to decide. I better pick something that's not too, you know, I, I wanted to be a so, like a social worker. Yeah. But they didn't have that degree at Indiana, so I picked sociology. Okay, I got you. So, yeah. And I've used it. You know, I've used the degree a, a little. Yeah, in my, yeah. In my life. I'm 55 now. But uh, first thing I did with it was um, worked overseas. And I, I said, I wasn't married. I could travel easily. So I used it to teach overseas. Okay, where at? Uh, first in Japan. Oh, nice, okay. In, in a little town called um, Atsumi, mm -hmm. surfing town, Akabane, junior high school. Okay. And I was, a, I was also working at a church. You know, that I was doing private classes for the church and live with a pastor. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like a missionist work. Nice. But I also worked in the secular school during the daytime. Gotcha. Three days a week, all day. And was the assistant teaching or English teaching English. Yep. And okay. you, and you make pretty good money in Japan. There's a lot of countries you can go if you have the degree mm -hmm. for sure. If you have the degree, it's easy. And if you don't have a degree, you can even go. If you, if you're taking some time off from college, you can go and, and teach. It's a great way to get your head straightened out. If you're going through something or not sure what you want to do, just experience something different. Right. Try something new. And you don't have to know the language. And mm -hmm. most of the countries, they want you to come. They're hiring you to come there wow. to speak the English. So I've heard, you know, different things like Ukraine, for example, where yeah, yeah. we are all aware. Um, people say it's harder to actually make money there mm -hmm. and, and because of the pay. But I, I've heard some people do do it, though. Okay. And, and uh, But most of the Asian countries like China, Taiwan, Japan, uh, you can actually go in and, and make enough. That's cool. Okay, so for school, you know, save money for school if your parents the, aren't paying. Pay for off it. your loans. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's what we're mm -hmm. trying to prevent: is people from going to school for two years, right. getting loans, and then oh, now I know what I want to do, but I have all these loans that all are all this money that I oh, yeah. that I've wasted. Um, right. So you went to school. You taught. Yep. How did you end up in Sacramento from Indiana? <clears throat> so I, w I went. I went. To Japan first. Okay. Yeah, actually, before even Japan, I was doing national park work at okay. resorts, traveling around the United States, and they, uh -huh. they give you free room and board. Yeah. So it's a great way to save money. And then I went to Japan, went to Bible school for two years, got got that you okay. know additional, and then I went to Romania after that. Mm -hmm. Loved the Eastern European culture. Okay. Went, was in Brasov, taught there. Had a little English school that I taught all different mm -hmm. ages, and then I went to Sweden where I got called over to America where I met my wife in you Southern went California. To Sweden? Yes. To a big conference there. Okay. It was in Sweden. I, I have very good friends in Sweden. Okay. And they invited me up there to this big conference in Uppsala, okay. Sweden, uh -huh. where I met some people that were going to a missions training center in Southern California. Okay. 
And they said, oh, why don't you come and just go there for a few months and just come down and take a, you know, yeah. like, like we needed extra training, right? Hang, hang out training. with us. Yeah. And so I went down there and went to that school. That's where I met my wife. Okay. Yep. And yeah, from there on, I, I, I got called up here. I never thought I would live in Sacramento of all places. Right. We used to watch this show called Eight is Enough. And we were bored out of our tears on it. It was a show in the 70s. It was yeah, filmed yeah. here. In Sacramento? Yeah. It was all about a family, like a normal white bread American family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, you know. So you think a lot of us had the stereotype of Sacramento from back east. Oh, that that's okay. kind of like the the white bread city in California. That's the place where the normal people are. The, nor in the normal people, right? The rest of the you know state. Everybody is, else is crazy, right? <laughs> we had this like stereotype of it. That wow, I never. But it's I, changed I a lot knew. now. But back then, you know, it was a lot like a sleepy. You know, it used to be a sleepy it's, little town. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually it's yeah past. I think from when I from what I remember, it just exploded in size and right. And people and housing and all that other stuff. Right. But I'm still here. I tried to escape and it's, I haven't succeeded. I tried to get to Forest Hill. I got up to Forest Hill. We bought a little, when we first got married, bought a little land. And mm -hmm. around that time that we were in that house, that was when I got the inkling mm -hmm. to get my real estate license. Okay. So I was like, by here by now, I was about, you know, my mid thirties. Okay. And the reason why I got it was, um, you know, I like to help people, of, of course. Mm -hmm. I like to teach kids. Mm -hmm. But then I started having my own kids mm -hmm. and I was like, well, I'm not gonna be able to be in a good mood if I'm teaching kids like all day and then I come home to my kids. <laughs> yeah, and more I, kids. I, yeah, I knew that, you know, cause I tried teaching here too. Uh, the first year I married at, at, with Pastor Godot at Nehemiah Academy private school uh -huh. in Del Paso Heights. Mm -hmm. And I did that for a full year. I made it through the year, but it was mm -hmm. the hardest, like that was the hardest teaching I've ever done wow. here in the States. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I decided that was when I made the decision. I, I got to do something that where I can like have free time. Yeah, yeah. So you decided yeah. to become a real estate agent, right? Mm -hmm. Honestly, I always see a real estate sign, uh, an mm -hmm. open house. I hear about real estate agents. I really don't know what they do. What do you guys do? Okay. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's a good question. A lot of people don't uh, know exactly. And there's two sides to real estate. Really, okay. you're either to make it in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. There's the side that you're working with buyers, and there's a side that you're working with sellers. Okay. So how do you choose? How do you choose? Well, that? the ideal agent that wants to be a serious agent that mm -hmm. wants to do this full time for long term, mm -hmm. no matter what the market's doing, is going to try to do equal amounts. Okay. So you want a lot of people give up on the listing side because there's a lot of competition mm -hmm. for listings. There's a lot of big big wigs out there that are, you know, saying we'll list your house and we, we list you know, eighty houses a month and and then they call you. Are you selling your home? I've had those. Oh yeah, right. Because you get on the database and they're paying the companies to give you the the ones who just were, you know, doing things that were kind of a sign that they were getting ready to sell. Oh okay. You're on the database. Anything you do online or check things out that goes into a you know phone number and they they call really? you. Really? Mm -hmm. So like if I go to yeah, if I go on Zillow, I'm just wondering what's my house worth, and boom, I'm on the database. Um, not 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 quite like that, but um. Like, let me, what happens a lot of time is someone tries to sell their house. Yeah. And in years ago, especially when it was not as strong a market, um, they would put it on the market for a few days, to check it out. Mm -hmm. And then as soon as you expire the listing, that sets it off. It goes into the system. Your number goes to all the agents that are paying. Oh, okay. So they can call the expired listing and say, hey, I can get your house sold. You know, that's, that's what a lot of agents do. And that's what I've done before too. Mm -hmm. It's not something I always enjoy doing. It's not yeah, my yeah. favorite part of real estate. Because you're, you're like really soliciting. bothering, you're bothering people, yeah. And and at the same time, they'll, they'll teach you if you work at a big company like Remax. I was with Remax for a while, mm -hmm. or Keller Williams. You know, mm -hmm. they'll teach you that you're not bothering them. You're just gonna look at it the right way. You're you're there to help them. You're you're helping them, and and you've got something they that they want. They want to sell their house, and you can get them top dollar. That kind okay. of thing. So it's a lot about marketing yourself. Okay. You know, like that. Yeah, yeah. So the selling side, and then the buyer side. Some people just give up on all that listing. And they just say, I'm going to work with buyers. And I'm mm -hmm. just going to do, I'm going to be low key. I'm going to do open houses, get my buyers. Mm -hmm. Or I'm going to just, uh, you know, get fed buyers. Because l big listing agents that do uh, radio ads and things in, mm -hmm. in this town right here. Okay. They get so many buyer leads, they, they don't even like, can't work them. Oh, okay. Because you have to like, take time. You have to show them. Mm -hmm. Like my brother-in-law, Andre Demko, he doesn't like, you know, that to you know, necessarily. He doesn't like to deal with he, all that. He likes to do his remodeling and, and, and you know, work as an investor in real yeah, estate, yeah. which is another way of doing real estate. But it takes time to show buyers 50 homes. Yes. Over two months. Mm -hmm. So I like to do both. I mean, I, I, think that's, I think it's fun. The buyer side is actually more 
um, in many ways, it's more um, uh, just feels like you're really there as almost like a counselor for them. Mm -hmm. And I work with a lot of first time home buyers, a lot of um, uh, VA mm -hmm. people that are veterans because they're 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 not easy to get their offers accepted mm -hmm. if they're doing like a zero down VA loan. Mm -hmm. So you have to have a little patience. Gotcha. And I, but I like working with them because you just feel very rewarded when they finally get in their first home and they get what they want and it's a good deal. Yeah. You know, and, and people, I let people back out all the time. I don't want them anything, even at the end, the last few days, if they feel like this, another house could be the one, not this one mm -hmm. back out, you know, and a lot of agents won't do that. Cause it's like, here we go. They're like, again. this is my money. Yeah. <laughs> so, so when you're driving around showing people the properties, you're not getting paid for that. Right. Nope, you're not getting paid at all. You're just kind of spending you're, money. You're doing the gas. good thing. You're paying it forward. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, and there are a lot of agents will, um, especially if you work for certain companies, they will um, uh, have you sign a a you know a, like like a listing agent contract, but your buyer's agent mm -hmm. that will kind of swear your allegiance to the buyer's agent. I don't do that because you know I just feel like that they should be able to leave at any time. I feel like if I'm good at what I'm doing. I should be able to keep them. Yeah, I don't want to like keep someone there, but you know, a couple of times it's happened. Yeah. There's two that I can think of in the last 15 years that were like really annoying ones where they left. <laughs> yeah, like, after yeah. I showed them so many, one was a relocation and they just decided they were executives for Sears moving here to mm -hmm. relocate. And they just decided they weren't gonna, they didn't like California. They wanted to move, stay in Chicago. After oh, I'd wow. taken them around and they'd rented a house for like a month, they just let, you know, I'd shown them every day for like a month. Well, see, that's why Sears is out of business now. They should have moved to California. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> yep. But okay, so yeah, what, what, what are, okay, you, you, you mentioned open houses. Yeah. What do you do? Do you, can you open a house? Like I'm driving down the street, I see an open house. Is that mm -hmm. that person listing or how does that work? No, um, most of the time when you're when you're driving down the street and you see an open house, you go in, it can be anybody. It can be the listing agent. Mm -hmm. um, but I'd say like, it's more likely that it'll be another agent that works in this neighborhood or in the mm -hmm. city that either works for that company or works as on that agent's team or like myself, if it's in a good location near me, I don't have to go very far, but if it's, yeah. a, if it's pretty close to my house and it's, um, it's somebody that has a house for sale and I know it's vacant and I know mm -hmm. they're not the type that likes to do open house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they're just there for like, they just want to get an offer. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll call them and Hey, I'll hold your house open. Yeah. And just do it because you get meet some buyers. Yeah. Most of the time you meet a buyer. So it's a good like a net, net networking tool. Yes, it's a really good networking tool. You're working as a team. You're trying to get a buyer for that listing that mm -hmm. the other agent has. Every deal has two agents mm -hmm. or unless it's dual agency, mm -hmm. which a lot of people don't like to do dual agency because it's impossible to really represent the seller and the buyer at the same time, you know, but, okay. but it happens. But it's really, really hard to do because you you really represent the seller, the original one that hired you. Yeah, yeah, because you're you're trying to protect both interests, right? And you're uh, what is it? I was about to say haggling, but <laughs> negotiating with yourself, right? Yeah, exactly. Negotiate. Okay, there you that, go. That, that makes sense. Dancing with myself. Yeah, <laughs> but it's but it's like you know, a lot of people want to do it because they, they can save money. Like mm -hmm. the seller will often agree to it, and then the buyer sometimes if they're an early, you know first time home buyer, they won't understand really what it is. So, cause the commissions, you know, will be less. Yeah. Most of the time the commission, you know, I offer less if, okay. if I represent both sides. Okay. So, so it's, you know, it's, it's a catch 22 and some companies won't even do that. They won't allow their agents to do that. They'll just find another agent that can represent the buyer. So oh, there's no really? kind of like, yep, it happens a lot. And like, okay. like, and like, um, you know, certain companies like Lion or Kelly Williams sometimes. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what, what real estate agent, I mean, like you said, there's, there's a buyer's, there's a seller's agent, mm -hmm. people, whatever they decide to choose. There's an mm -hmm. investor's agent. Well, okay. Or not an investor's agent, right. but an agent. Focusing on the investors. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of agents that just are, that's their main, um, you know, if you're thinking about getting into real estate, you can think about. Um, what kind of people you want to work with, what your, what your market is going to be, mm -hmm. because, um, you should have like a, a, a focus. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be like an investor, are you going to be an agent that, that looks for investors to find ugly homes to buy mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, get them to buy them from you. And then they they re 
flip them and then resell them. Mm -hmm. Or are you gonna look, are you, maybe you wanna be the one yourself. If you get cash together at a young age, um, a lot of people do it. I you know a small loan of a million dollars? Yeah. I know a person of people that, that when they're young and they, you know, 20 yeah, years yeah. old, and they pool the money together, get cash, and they start like flipping, you know, because you have to have cash. Yeah. You can't just like. You get the best deal with cash. Yeah, you get the best deal with cash. I mean, you can do it. Go to, go to one of those real estate seminars that they teach you how to use other people's money and things okay, like okay. that. Okay, so that, but, that was actually, honestly, that was my next yeah. question. A real estate seminar. I see like coming yeah. next to you, I'll teach you how to make money in real estate. Are those things. <sighs> Is it worth? Is it worth the money? Is it worth the time? Do you, well, what's your experience? Have you been on to one of them? Yeah, of course, of course. Hasn't everybody? <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> yeah, well, you're you're in a different field, but mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, I, back in the day, especially I haven't been to one lately because I figured out what they were. Yeah, yeah. But um, I did go to some of those in like when we had the market change. Yeah. Because we went in in real estate, especially in the state of California, it goes up and down, and lately it's been stable. Mm -hmm. But in the you know. Right after I got my license in 2004, we had, you know, those two years were great. And yeah, I was yeah. learning, I was learning how to do it and everything. And then all of a sudden it just started going, you know, crazy mm -hmm. and everybody lost their home and the, the market was different. Mm -hmm. So once that started, that made you, makes you think twice. I mean, right. about it. So you go to those meetings, you go to anything and learn how to do foreclosures, learn how to work a short sale mm -hmm. back when that market was like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, using other people's money ultimately the easiest way to do it because you get to work with teams and those kind of things though those gurus and the people from the you know from the tv shows will yeah, yeah. tell you hey i know what i'm doing let's pool our money together and they'll teach you they'll set you up with a group to work with so you have to it's kind of like in school you know there's some people that know what they're doing and there's some people that don't okay. know what they're doing so um I, ideally the best way is to work with some people you trust mm -hmm. if you want to do that kind of real estate and get cash mm -hmm. at a very, you know, start pooling the cash mm -hmm. and then work with them like two or three people, four people, people that you can trust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then not it, screw each once other you over. get that cash stashed there, then you can keep using it for the other deals. That, There'll yeah. always be these houses that people just want to dump right away mm -hmm. and, and, and ca you know, cash deal right away. But that makes sense. So, yeah. um, you were talking, you were talking, the market was good for two years and the market started mm -hmm. changing a little bit how stable is is a real estate agent's job i mean with the market sometimes being unpredictable i mean now right. like you said it's a little it's, stable it's not a good job for someone who wants um stability all the time um and and the same kind of thing every day it's really not you know it's it's um where you if you want to have the guaranteed income mm -hmm. like I, I i have it set in my head that i like to do, like to do a deal every month mm -hmm. okay to keep keep myself kind of like expecting that mm -hmm. and um and half and half listings and buyers. It doesn't always work that way, but mm -hmm. you're, you're shooting for like half listings and half buyers. Mm -hmm. um, but in general, you know, um, the market can be, especially in this state mm -hmm. of California, it's different in Texas, it's different in other states, but here in California, it goes, you know, it can go wide swings. Okay. So it can help you if you're starting out and you buy a house like I did in 1999, mm -hmm. that house up in Forest Hill I was mentioning yeah, with yeah. one acre. Okay. And um and we loved it, but then we were like, gosh, the gas started going up. When we bought it, gas was like a dollar fifty a gallon. Yeah. And then when we sold it five years later, the gas was three fifty a gallon. Wow. So we okay. that's why we sold it. We're yeah. like, we can't this is not feasible. Yeah. And the kids were coming and they were complaining about the long drive, fifty minute drive, you know. Mm -hmm. So we just decided that we would um, you know, we would sell it. But we made Bought the house for one sixty seven mm -hmm. and sold it for three thirty five and didn't do a thing to the house. Nice. So in five years, that's the kind of stuff you deal with in California. Just kind of. So there's a benefit to the crazy market, right. but then there's also if you're on the wrong side if of you, that. If you jump in at the right time and don't make a foolish choice, you can mm -hmm. like make a good you know buy and then and then make money on it. Okay. But if you're not you know doing it the wrong time, you can lose all your money, like a lot of people did. And they okay. bought too many houses and weren't getting rid of them during those years and they just had to and they were with weird loans that were not cash deals okay got you yeah and so you you yeah. mentioned a little bit about the why mm -hmm. why why else what why did you choose real estate what did it offer for you okay. um so because like i said with my kids yeah. were coming and i um did not want to do 
I actually like, you know, he, be, prior to getting my license, mm -hmm. I did moonlight a couple other jobs I didn't even mention. So I reinvented myself a few times over the years. So, so I've been a waiter, I've been worked in fine dining, yeah. selling the fine wines and, and, and doing the resort work. Mm -hmm. Like I told you, the national parks, but I also did it here in Sacramento until I got my going in the real estate. So you're a pretty so, brave. Uh, I, I'm not afraid to really try new things, okay. but you don't have insurance. You got to remember, you got to, you don't have the benefits going a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. you don't have the, the uh, insurance. So I didn't feel like I could ski, uh, you know, safely yeah, yeah. during those years <laughs> you can't hurt or yourself. do some things that you would want to, you know, normally don't think about it. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I did those things. I worked as a group home, you know, as a counselor at group homes mm -hmm. for SED youth back then as well. Okay. So. But when, again, when I started having my own kids, I was like, I really want to put all my energy and time into my own kids. I wanted to homeschool my own kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I don't trust the school system here mm -hmm. completely. And it's a, there's some really good teachers, but there's some really bad ones. Mm -hmm. And there's some really good kids, but there's some really bad kids that goof off mm -hmm. that are not being, you know, they're, they can goof up the learning process. So, yeah, yeah. so I gave my kids, you know, so that's why I, took, I picked real estate because I can make my own hours. I don't have to um, listen to, you know, somebody telling me I'm not, producing enough it's up to <laughs> yeah, me yeah. if i don't make money then it's my fault i didn't yeah. make money i didn't can't blame anybody yeah i didn't make the calls i didn't yeah. do enough open houses or mm -hmm. you know so it's first it's good for someone who um I, ideally my wife and i have talked about that what you know it's better to have one of the two doing a job that has those benefits okay like a that nurse makes a nurse yeah. at kaiser or you know a um a teacher just something work Offers for the government the, yeah something so you, like that so you get that you get that insurance you get the benefits, mm -hmm. but then you also, the other spouse has the freedom for the, the more open schedule, flexible schedule, stuff like that. Right. right. So, so you chose a, a flexible schedule because of your kids. Yep. And I, you, and you yep. very found, you found that very beneficial for your family. Right. And I also understood after mm -hmm. I got into real estate, it took me a little bit of time to catch it. Okay. What, because in my, I, I'm, I'm stereotypical about real estate too, like a lot of people. Mm -hmm. It's not one of those fields that everybody's going, oh, you're, um, you know, doing this to help all people. You know, it's like, it's, it's kind of like you have your stereotype of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like lawyer, yeah, real estate agent, you know what I'm saying? You're in yeah. it to like sucker it to someone who doesn't really want it <laughs> yeah, to sell yeah. it like a like the car lot. Yeah. But it's really not. It, it's really not. It's um, especially if you're th just there to really truly help the person mm -hmm. and you're not pushy. Or doing trying to make the person do something that they don't want to do if you're just open honest and just completely transparent with them then they will see that in you i've, I've found that all, you know everybody i work with has been very open to um to me you know working with me again and uh nobody felt like that i ever so okay was so, pushing it on them so so what i noticed is when the economy kind of tanked in california mm -hmm. all the real estate you see no billboards no real estate agents all right. of a sudden, these past couple of years, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of, I mean, no, no disrespect, but there's a bunch of noobs. Yeah. Real estate noobs. Right, right. Do they know what they're doing? Um, are th What's your experience? Have you worked with any of them? Um, are they representing well, the real estate agent? Well, um, it's just like, you know, um, any field that you're in, uh, from like acting in Hollywood mm -hmm. to, I'm sure, in the construction field mm -hmm. or... Um, you know, there's always going to be the new people going in. Yeah. Um, and so it's, it's, it just depends on if they're good at what they do. If they're good at what they do, then, but they got to understand, you know, a lot of people get in because their 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 family is pushing them to be the real estate agent in the family. <laughs> okay, gotcha. We got to have somebody to go to. We got to get the deals. So we can like have you do a 1% for us, a 1% yeah, yeah, yeah. listing or whatever. You and know, then they buy one house every 10 yeah, years. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, they're, you know, they're, that, that goes on. But... You know, it costs money to keep your real estate license going too. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be a little bit more than just family deals, unless you're buying like a lot. If your family is doing flips, mm -hmm. and, and they're cutting you in on it on that yeah. part of it. But if you're just working with clients, you really have to um, understand that you're we're spending. You know, for the National Association of Realtor membership, the California Association of Realtors, for the um, MLS every month mm -hmm. that we have to pay for. So you pay that monthly costs, or yearly? We pay well. Yearly for the National Association of Realtor in mm -hmm. the California, but it's like a thousand bucks. Yeah, so that's money, yeah. and then and then MLS costs about one fifty every quarter. Mm -hmm. So count on that being about six hundred dollars. Okay, and that's just sixteen hundred dollars plus some other expenses. I'd say at least two grand. Oh, you have to pay your company depending mm -hmm. on your brokerage. Mm -hmm. Mine is EXP, and we do a monthly 
uh, one of about seven, it's about $75, mm -hmm. but we get all the websites and all the, you know, different lead generation tools. Gotcha, gotcha. So it's, so that's, you know, 75 a month times 12. So that's, you know, we're talking thousands of dollars. Yeah, before you start making money. Right. Plus driving around your time you're investing into open houses. Mm -hmm. I mean, this sounds like you really got to love it right. before you start investing all this money. Right, I think so. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and have the, a good attitude about it. Don't just think it's gonna be easy getting in and, and all these deals are gonna come to you. They, they will, they yeah. will. If you, if, you, if you think positively and are, are really have a good attitude and are working, doing what you need, what it takes. Yeah. But not, a, and I don't recommend either just going into it to be a buyer's agent only. A lot mm -hmm. of people do that and they're happy. Yeah. Stay at home moms and people. But it's like, it's really not like the full in real estate should be doing, if you're gonna be serious, full-time job, yeah. both, both of them, both sides. Trying. Okay, so I have this weird feeling that some people go into real estate just because they've maybe heard from others that, hey, this is easy money. Um, just mm -hmm. get in, you'll, you'll make this much money a month. Um, mm -hmm. is, is that true or is there a learning curve? Is there, you know, how long when you got your license how mm -hmm. long did it take you before you actually you're like okay i'm happy with what i'm making very fast because i was during i was getting in at that time in in 2004. okay and it was early 2004. prices are climbing and that and that that was when it, everything was going up like by the month yeah you would buy a house and it was going up like the next month it was worth ten thousand more so and that do you remember that was when they were waiting in line for the um different uh, communities of different heritages were all they would all get together yeah, yeah. and like wait in line at the new homes being built you were little back really then, but, but they were they would wait in line they'd be camping out like it was like a homeless camp yeah at these homes home sites to, to be the first in line for the new releases get out of yep, here in antelope and roseville yep it was going on yeah That's, and they, why yeah just because they knew they could resell it or because it was a good deal it was, it was such a big huge demand and so, some of them would be buying it Yes, to resell it. Some would okay. be buying it to hold it. There mm -hmm. were a lot of those homes that were being held. I actually bought one okay. that had been held by an investor at Crocker Ranch uh -huh. when I sold my house in Forest Hill and I bought it. They'd just been sitting on it. It had been sitting there, nobody in it for like three years. Wow. And they sold it and we bought it from them. So, you know, it's like, a, it's just That's the way it is. But so I, I made money right away because we were doing, that. we used to have these signs that said 500 moves you in. They were big red, white, and blue signs. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of ugly. And yeah. they'd just line them up and just like, everybody that wanted to get a loan, we just had get them get a loan. And you know, 500 moves you in, right? It was much easier. Yeah, what's that movie? Uh, the Big, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, David, what's the movie? It's it's the movie about the about the crash in two thousand eight. Oh right, right. It was a uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, I, can't remember the name I of forget it. what it's called. If, yeah. well, I'm sure you guys know what we're talking about. But it started in two thousand five for me. Really? It didn't even start. Two thousand eight is like oh anybody who was like in real estate knew that that it was happening in oh five. So two years after I got in, mm -hmm. I was making at Remax. I was there like you know I I made the hundred hundred thousand dollar club. Yeah, I, yeah. I had made that money. Yeah. That was the first time I'd ever made that much money. Yeah. And, You're and like, broke Whoa. the triple did you know in one in one year uh -huh. so that was so was that was two years so pretty fast yeah but if you get in at a, at a time that's slower like if the people that got in like that after that 2007 2008 mm -hmm. i'm sure it was like really hard you know not to crack to that. make people buy to get people alone to right. get them approved and all that right okay so how can i how can somebody's looking into becoming real estate? Maybe their dad, their mom, like you said, their family mm -hmm. is saying, "Hey, uh, go become a go become a real estate agent." Or they see real estate agents and they're like, "Wow, that's probably a successful job." What what mm -hmm. what should they be looking for? Where can they apply? I mean, do you just go to Remax and or to any of the these uh, real estate companies and just apply for a position? Mm -hmm. Is there a well, there there's different specialties that different offices have. So, um, for example, um, uh, there's some commercial that just mm -hmm. do commercial mm -hmm. that or focus on that. Mm -hmm. There's some that are very local and and really get a lot of local buyers looking like a lot lion the mm -hmm. local one. Okay. Here, um, some of them offer really, really good training mm -hmm. and others not so good. Keller Williams and uh, EXP, for example, do really, really good trainings for the new agents. Mm -hmm. 
And um, the direction of real estate is to go cloud-based offices. So that's the direction we're going. Everything's going, we're like we do just, er, transactions are all digital now. Mm. When I started, everything was pen and paper and you were wet ink. And it was very confusing and complex to do that way. Mm -hmm. Now it's much easier. You I always would, have to, oh, I, we can't meet today to sign the paper. Right. Now you, okay. Yep. And, and then you had to fax it and the papers would get caught <laughs> in the machine. Yeah. Right? You had to do all that stuff. Or, Use yeah. floppy disks right. to, save, <laughs> to save things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's much easier now with the digital signing and everything. So, yeah, yeah. But I would recommend, you know, um, if somebody wants to, you know, do in real estate, you should like probably shadow an open house with someone. Okay. It's fun to do. I mean, uh, somebody that knows what they're doing in an open house and knows how to talk to the people. Mm -hmm. And um, and you, you have to have really good signage in an open house. You want to attract people in there. Now, if you advertise on the MLS a few mm -hmm. days before, you get a lot of traffic in an open house. Okay. But shadow somebody, see if that's something you could like see yourself doing or hang around, um, you know, a real estate agent that is doing it, you know. Okay. That, a lot of agents like, like that. You know, like so someone there, if we so. if like say I'm driving, I see an open house, just ask them if you can hang out with them or well, somebody you know. Some, it's, it'd be better like ask them if you can ever, not that day, not the same day, but like introduce yourself. We uh -huh. have, when we're holding houses up, you'd be surprised who stops in. I've had, I mean, everybody from like homeless people that need ministry. Yeah. They, they're like asking me to pray for them. I was like, yeah. an open house. <laughs> yeah. I'm here to sell this house. Um, to, uh, uh, a lot of lenders coming in, loan officers coming in, saying, "Hey, I want to introduce myself. Um, this is what I do. I'm local. Mm -hmm. You know, if you want to work with me, I, it'll be great to work with you." Or um, people who are a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of contractors, mm -hmm. they come in. They like to give their judgment of the house because I do a lot of like holding uh, houses open that are remodeled homes mm -hmm. for my friends that have invested. Mm -hmm. So they like to tell what they think of the work in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, they almost like judge it when they come in. It's just, just a like, fun thing they do. Let's see if they're ripping people off right. in here. It's a fun thing they do. And they like to tell you exactly what, you know, it's wrong up there. It's wrong. It's 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 not straight. The, the corners 30, aren't 30,000 off. These crown molding is not installed right. The recess lighting has cracks in it. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's fun. So, you, you meet a lot of people. So, somebody that's like wants that. I even get people that are just got their license and they mm -hmm. come in at, just to see what, how to do it. You know, what they're doing. Okay. So, it's a lot of agents don't mind. I don't mind it. I think it's fun. I mean. I used to do okay. them with my wife all the time. The more the people that are in there, the funner it is because it makes it be like a little, you know, do you ever fun so, party. So the, there's like videos I've, I've, I've seen before where, hey, how to make an open house, put some fresh cookies in the in the oven, have it oh, smell yeah. like home. What, what do you do? What are your... <laughs> oh yeah, I've done that before. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've done that before. You gotta be careful with the cookies because um, you get a lot of kids in those open houses with yeah. the chocolate chip. And if there's carpet, like white carpet on the floor, they but get some dirt, <laughs> you know, it's the crumbs all, you know, crumbs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't want to like, if they, if it's okay with the seller, I do that. Yeah. I just did that recently at okay. the house down the street that, you know, so, okay. so yeah, make cookies and does two story. It smells good. What does two story down the street? No, what that we sold for, for, uh, Oh God, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, Cause th there's, there's a, there's a story. I mean, yeah. a house down the street right here where, um, they're posting like there's a thousand square feet more than I know there's not a thousand square feet more. I'm like, how did they? I mean, I think I thought that was illegal to oh, to kind of lie about the square the, footage on the they house. They added on to it. It's that big one they added on. Yeah, to but I don't know what kind of addition. It's not like a full on addition. No, it's no. a bunch of Mickey yeah. Mouse stuff. It's been on the sale for two years now, that house. Really? Something's not right. Yeah. That's insane. I don't know why it's taking so long to sell that. But. So, what, what is your goal? Say you have a seller or or somebody that you're selling a house for do you you say hey i can sell your house in 30 days what do you do you promise oh, for listings? Do you, yeah do you Listing promise them something or well i yeah i do you know because there, there, there are agents I, I, that say hey come with me i'll, I'll sell your house in 30 yeah, days yeah or else it just depends on the house uh, no i will not buy the house from them yeah because i don't have the extra <laughs> cash to just pay cash yeah but there are agents that do so yeah. Go for it, you know? I mean, I, that's what I say. I mean, I've, I've gone up against uh, enlisting appointments because most people check two or three people, uh, different agents. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, usually, uh, they'll usually call one big wig that's on the radio or that, you know. Mm -hmm. But I actually don't think they always pick that one. I know for a fact that they pick me once yeah, yeah. over the big radio big wig in town. So they, mm -hmm. sometimes they don't like the, that, that kind of like style, the mm -hmm. slick style with the big kind of promo 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple, like they like just a simple like just state like it is. Yeah, just hey, and, we're and, just um, work together. And I tend to be that way. I not I tend not to. I've gone through the trainings where they teach you. I've gone through the camps. Yeah, real estate camps like with wow. you know, back, with bulls, you know, with Kelly Williams. Yeah, and um and so I've gone through those camps. I've I've gone. I've I've memorized all the different like things you're supposed to say at the listening point. But I really believe that each individual person is distinct. Yeah, and you have to like. It's a lot of different things. What's the condition of their house? What's the market doing right mm -hmm. now? What, you know, there's some like right now, I know for a fact that if it's a moving ready, nice, cute house on a quiet street in a nice yeah. neighborhood, three bed, two bath, and you want to list it at value of 300,000 or 325 mm -hmm. here in uh, like Antelope area mm -hmm. or even Roseville for 400,000, it's going to be gone. Wow. It's going to be sold for your top dollar. Yeah. And if it's, you know, if it's an uglier house that needs work and things, you haven't kept maintained things in it, mm -hmm. then it's not going to sell for that. So I'm not going to tell them, yeah, for sure you can get your price. Yeah. If I don't think they can get it. Yeah. Unless they do this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. Section one pest, repair your roof, get it staged, get the spider webs out of there, you know. See, that that's awesome because then the, the buyer... It's like wow, this guy, this guy really cares. He really wants to make. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like an first impression when you come see the house. So, it seems like you're very knowledgeable in real mm -hmm. estate, and you obviously you've been in it for 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 a while now. Maybe you wanna I wanna give you a little shout out. Where can people find you? How mm -hmm. can they contact you if they're? I am at EXP Real Estate. Uh -huh. I focus in nor northern Sacramento area, mm -hmm. Antelope, mm -hmm. West Roseville, Citrus Heights. Mm -hmm. Those are my main areas, North Highlands even. So, and I'm at ClarkAndrews.com. Mm -hmm. But yeah, my cell phone number is 916-813-5950. Okay. That's what I answer all the time. Awesome. Love to hear from anybody that's uh, got questions or you can ask me anything you want about real estate and I'll do the best I can to uh Yeah, yeah. well, I, I definitely know from uh, spending some time with you before, you're a pretty open guy and you like to give straight answers, <laughs> not beat around the bush. So. <laughs> Anyways, I want to thank you again for coming on. And I'm sure Thanks. people listening uh, have learned something. I definitely have. Yeah. I um, learn a lot from you too. So Really? <laughs> yeah. On your, uh, your side of things. So Okay. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thank you, Clark. Yeah.